ಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಸ್ಮದ್ ಪರಮ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಸ್ಮದ್ ಸರ್ವಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಮದೇ ಆದಿವಂಶ ಲೋಗೋವಿಂದ್ರ ಮಹ ದೇಶಿಯ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ವೇದಾಂತ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮಾನುಜಯ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಪರಾಂಗುಸರಾಸಾಯ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಯಾಮನವನೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮ ಮಿಶ್ರಯ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಉದ್ದವೀ ಕಾಕ್ಷಾಯ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ ನಾರಮುಡಿ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಸರ್ವೋವಾಯ ನಮಃ ವಿಶ್ವಕ್ಷೇನಾಯ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಧರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ ರಂಗ ಸದಾರಿ ಸಂಯುಗ ಲಬ್ಧಾಗ ಮಾಂಧತ್ವಯಂ ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ ವೀರ ರಘುತ್ವ ಹತ್ಯ ಸಡಜಿತ್ ಪಾದಾರ ವಿಂದಾಶ್ರಯಂ ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ ವೇದವದಂ ಸದೇಶೇರೆ ಕಾರುಣ್ಯ ವೀಕ್ಷಾಸ್ಪದಂ ಸೇವೆ ರಂಗ ದೀನ ಸಾಸನ ವಸಂ ನಾರಾಯಣಂ ಯೋಗಿನಂ ಶ್ರೀಮದೇ ಶ್ರೀ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ನರಸಂಹ ದಿವ್ಯ ಪಾದಗ ಸೇವಕ ಶಿವನ್ ಸರಗೋ ಬ ಶ್ರೀ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಯದೀಂದ್ರ ಮಹಾದೇಶಿಯ ನಮಃ ವೇದಾಂತ ದೇಶೀಂದ್ರ ಕಡಾಕ್ಷ ಲಬ್ಧ ತ್ರಯಂತ ಸಾರಮಣತ್ಯ ಗುಣಂ ಬುಧಾಗ್ರಿಯಂ ನಾರಾಯಣಾತ್ಯ ದಿದುರ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಕ್ಷಿಕ್ತಂ ಶ್ರೀರಂಗನಾಥ ಯತಿಶೇಖರ ಆಶ್ರಯಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಮದೇ ಶಿವನ್ ಸುರಗೋ ಬಸ್ಯ ರಂಗನಾಥ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಮಹಾದೇಶಿಯ ನಮಃ ಯೋನಿತ್ಯಮಚ್ಚುರ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಿಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋ ಹದಸ್ತಲಿಧರಾಣ ತೃಣಾಯ ಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವದೋ ಸಿದೇಗ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜಸ್ಯ ಶರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರವತ್ತೆ ಶ್ರೀಮಾನ್ ವೆಂಕಟನಾಥಾರ್ಯ ಕವಿರಾಕಿಕೇಸರಿ ವೇದಾಂತಾಚಾರ್ಯ ವರಿಯೋ ಮೇ ಸಂಧಿದತ್ತಾಂ ಸದಾ ಹೃದಯ ಅಡೈಯವನೈ ಅವಾಕೊಂಡ ಉಳ್ವುಯಿರುಂ ಉಡಲುಂ ಉಡಲಾಯ್ ಉಡಯವನೈ ಸಡಯನೈ ಅಯನೈಯಂ ಪಡೈತ ಎಡಯನೈ ಮಡೈದಿರಂದು ಮಾದಬನೊರುಳಾಲ್ ಮರುಳ್ ನೀಕಿ ಮರೈ ಪೊರುಳ್ ಬಿಡಯನೈ ಕೊಡಯನ ಕುವಿತ್ತ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಅಡೆಂಡೇನ್ ಮುನ್ನಡಿ ಯಾನ್ ಪೆತ್ರ ಪೇರೇ ಅಡೆಂಡೇನ್ ಮುನ್ನಡಿ ಯಾನ್ ಪೆತ್ರ ಪೇರೇ ಸೊ ವಿ ಗೋಂಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಭಾಷ್ಯಂ ಅಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಟೆಲಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಭಾಷ್ಯಂ ಇಸ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಹೈ ಲೆವೆಲ್ very elementary level so the easy way to compare a first grade kid in the school he knows alphabets a through z shakespeare also knows alphabets there's a huge difference so similarly what we going to learn here is the first grade level what we need to do most of us are here they had the samashrayanam they had the bharanyasam and everything so what sri ramanuja has done in sri bhashyam we had to understand because when you were in a kid you learned a lot of slogas about alvars nalai vidya prabandham we learned about desiga sostram and prabandham and everything but what we did uh, learn about ramanuja that's nothing can you tell one sloga from ramanuja if somebody has you say ramanuja is the visita dvaidam what is nirdharanam so that's what he did he established to that one or he reinforced that one we established all of them you say but he can't tell not even a single slogan from brahmanuja because the kind of things what he have done are very very high level very abstract kind of a thing only very learned people can understand so in our sampradayam there are four things they are asking to do kalakshepam kalakshepam and upanyasa are different upanyasa we see one they take the whole thing ramayana if you take they don't go line by line they tell you this is the story and what is the essence moral you learn but kalakshepam they take the source code they go through line by line they teach you and they every line they start they ask a question and everything so that is called kalakshepam that kind of a thing so in our is there are grandha sadushtayam four things they ask you to do kalakshepam first one is sri bhashyam second one is gita bhashyam those two are written by bhagavat ramanuja I'll, i'll make a notes and give it to everybody probably i'll send it at some time and the third one is basically called shrimat ragasya tresaram swami desi ante and the last one is bhagavat vishayam bhagavat vishayam means the explanation for tiruvai muri so that is the only one called bhagavat vishayam anything you talk about bhagavan is bhagavat vishayam but the trivai muri is so superior and what we call bhagavad vishayam is arayira padi 6000 padi that's what is called is written by tirukkurigai piran pillan ramanujas nephew that is called bhagavad vishayam so four things sri varsham ida varsham ragasetra saram bhagavad vishayam in that order usually that is how they would learn if you look at the one sri varsham if you take it every single line what he wrote he took the help from namarvas through i 
But we learn Sri Bhashyam. That is the explanation of all of them. Then goes into Gita Bhashyam. What Krishna told Bhagavad Gita on that explanation. And then we go to Ragasya Prasaram. The whole thing we saw for a couple of years. And then finally we go to Thiruvai Muri. Because everything came from Thiruvai Muri. We look at the tree. Oh, it's so huge. And then look at the seed. This seed from which the tree has come. So we're going in a reverse way. And then if you go a one four level lower, is under its Thiruvai. What Namarvar did in one verse, one pashram, and I did with one word, like that one. So it is so amazing. So we are taking the reverse order. In the Sri Varshim, what we are going to learn is not necessarily every line by line what Embermana has done. That is what I have given a simple example. We want to go to India, so we are taking the boarding pass, and all everybody has to know which plane you have to take, what is the flight number, what time, what gate. Everybody has to know that. So whether you are here learning at a kindergarten level or they go to Ariga Singer, sit on his street and learn that one, everybody has to know the basic things. But what we do, after you learn, you go to the plane, you keep the boarding pass and you don't do anything. You just sit there to go for the destination. The guy next to you, he knows a lot of them. He adjusts the seat, he brings the food he eats, he reads the magazine, he goes to the pilots and he talks. Because he knows more things he does. But it doesn't matter. Both of you sitting on the plane, both of you will go to the same destination. As long as you take the right plane with the right boarding pass, that's all it's needed. So here what we're going to see only up to that level. Not too high. That's all we needed. Because later on, in Sri Bhashyam he says, the Buddha Madam is not correct. Samana Madam is not correct. Vaibhashigan is not correct. Sankhya Madam is not correct. Advaidam is not correct. Dvaidam is not correct. So you have to know all those things only when you go and argue and establish right articles and everything. We already bought into that. There is no reason to know all of them. By studying that one sometimes, if you don't study properly, it will confuse us. <coughs> so we stop at that level. So we want to learn the basics of Sri Bhashyam and then we move on to Ragasya Prasaram and then we go into the Thiruvayamri. Like I said, Trasaram is some of them, and we can shrink that one later on within a two, three classes. What is the essence of that one? We saw. So, that is the whole idea of the Sri Varsham, what we are going to see. We are not going to see line by line in all of them. Okay, with that prelude, we start. First thing you want to ask is Pramanam, Prameyam, Pramada. Three things. Prameyam. We always want to know something. Let's assume if I want to become a doctor, that is my goal. So I have to know everything about doctor. So being a doctor, that is called Premeya. To do that one, you have to learn. What you have to do? You have to buy the Grace Anatomy book. You have to go and uh, do some experiments. You have to learn anatomy. You have to go to the college. All these kinds of things that shows you to take you to the doctor. These are the Pramanams. These are the things showing. Maybe Grace Anatomy is better. Something may not be better. But all of them are showing. So similarly, what is the premium? What you want to understand everything about? The one what you want to understand everything about is Bhagavan. And what shows the Bhagavan is called Pramanam. Premium is Bhagavan. Pramanam is something that shows about Bhagavan. When it shows, the mirror when it shows, it has to show exactly what it is. It should not show something that is wobbly, something bigger, something shorter. It should not show that. Exact replication of that. Esha, Dudosha, Rahida, Mahida, Purani. Kuratharvan says, Vedam, Shrudi, Nigamam, Marai, all of them are synonyms. And that is the one that shows Bhagavan very, very good. So that is why we take the Vedam, the Shrudi as the highest one to show the Pramana. There are several pramanams are there. Pramanam you can think of as a proof or a rule book. Something like that one. It shows Bhagavan. In the case of Pramada means the person who knows that one. Like us. We want to learn about Bhagavan. So Pramanam, Prameyam, Pramada. These three are there. So we are here. We are the Pramada. Pramanam is the Vedam. 
Premeyam is basically Bhagavan. Yes, Vedam is the only thing that is tells Bhagavan, you can ask. No, it is not. There are several things are there. In our words, we say Sudhi, Smriti, Idihasha, Puranam, Agama, Darsanam. Six of them we are doing. What's all these things? Shruti means we are hearing Shravanam. That is how it's Shruti. Shruti means Vedas. Vedas has got the highest level. It's like a Supreme Court. What it says, you cannot refuse by any other means. Vedas are the final one. Why Vedas are final one? If you take it, if you take Bible, it is written by Luke, Paul, John, like that. It's a human being. If you take a Quran, it is written by Muhammad. It's a human being. If you take Buddhism, it's written by Buddha. And all these people are human beings when they are right. But Vedas, even Bhagavan says, I don't know where it comes from. It is not coming from anybody's mouth. When it is not coming from anybody's mouth, it does not have any kind of a bias. For example, if I write a book, I won't write anything about Greek. Why? Because I don't know Greek. So my flaws are reflected there. And my bias is reflected. I would say, Siva Shom is very good. Narayanan is good because I am biased. That's the kind of thing we would do. But Vedas are not like that. It is not coming out of somebody's mouth. So that is why it is very, very unbiased. Anonymous one. So we take that one. In a simple way of thinking, Vedas given to us by aliens. Somebody like Devas or Rishis coming from somewhere, they may be hundreds of thousands of years ahead of our culture. They came and gave it to you. So what we are reading, something people may find 20,000 years later. That is what the script we have got. It's like the Back to the Future. The guy got the scorecard book. 30 years ahead, already he got that one he was looking. That is why they are looking at that one. So many things in Veda says, people are really puzzled. How it says? We don't get puzzled on that one. We know because it's not written by human. Somebody who is very smart came and gave that one to us. That is why Vedas are so superior to us. So, Shruti is the highest one. Then, these Rishis, Rishis are the seers, those who see the Bhagavan. So, those people, they look at that one, and they try to interpret that one, like Manusmriti, Kabila Smriti, Sandilya Smriti, Harida Smriti, so many Smritis are there. Smritis are, is actually what you retain in your memory. That is called Smriti. So they retain the Vedas and they give their own interpretation. That is called Smriti. Smriti, Smriti. Next one is Idikasa. Idikasa means this is how it has happened. This is the story that is called Idihasam, like Ramayanam and Mahabharata. The slogans in Ramayanam says, when Lord Narayana coming from Moksham all the way down to Ayodhya as a Rama, Vedam also came along with him from the Moksham. And it came as Ramayana. So that is how he came as Rama, Vedam came as Ramayana. That's a story. So that is the way we think Ramayana is. Why? Because certain people cannot do Veda Dhyanam. For example, woman cannot do Veda. And fourth Varna cannot do Veda. So how do they know the inside, intricate meanings of Vedas? The way they would know is through the stories. Ramayana gives the whole thing as a story. Mahabharata gives you as a story. That is how they tell the Vedas. That is the next one. I mean, next line one is Purana. There are 18 Puranas are there. Out of 18 Puranas, 6 of them are important, which are called Sattvika Puranas. 6 in Rajogunam, 6 in Tamasagunam. So, 6 and 6 and 6, we take the Sattvika Puranam, 6. Out of that, very important one, two things. Sri Vishnu Purana, Bhagavata. These two are the most important for us. So, that is what we take. So, Shruti, Smriti, Idhasha, Purana. Then, there is something called Agama. Agamams are what we do, Pancharatra Agamam. But Narayana told in five different nights for different people how to worship him. Pancharatra Agamam is how to worship the Bhagavan. How to do the rituals in the temple. 
that is what it is, Pancharata. Vikasa Muniva, he did Vaikanasa. Vaikanasa is another one that has been used in Tirupari. Tirupari follows Vai, uh, Vaikanasam. Even Trivendibram does Vaikanasam also. And Sri Rangam and all other places, they do Pancharatra. There are different procedures how they do that one. So when you go and watch the Tirumanjanam or some of the things one place to the other, there may be a slight variation here and there. So the way how they handle the slogas, the Veda parts, what they tell, could be a little different. So that is what is written in the Agama. So the next one out of the after that one is called Darsanam. In the Darsanam, what it is basically, Darsanam means seeing. So they took the uh, rishis, similar to the Smriti, they tried to establish the philosophical viewpoint. That is called, in ours, there are six of them are very important. Shat Darsanam. In the Shat Darsanam, Nyayam, Vaibhashigam, Yogam, those kind of a thing, it comes. Finally, Mimamsa and Vedanta. Those are the two things we are interested in. See, Yogam is even very similar to what Padanjali said. Padanjali said the Yogam, and they, they go through certain kind of philosophical concept. To tell you very simply, the Vedanta is the only one that tells Bhagavan Lord Narayana is everything. Even Mimamsa, one before that, out of the six orders, one before that, it doesn't tell all of them. Even Mimamsa says, it says Narayana, not exclusively Narayana. They tell other kinds of things. So now, why we come through all these things? You want to go to, let's assume, you want to go to Los Angeles. You want to go to a particular house. You want to know exactly what is the direction you want to go. It is on the west. And I want to go to California. I want to go to that state. I want to go to that street. So you have to have a focus in streamline how do you go. So we are coming from Veda all the way. Vedas are so huge, humongous. Out of which, it's like a, taking a needle from a haystack. How do we establish what you believe? What we believe is our forefathers told. What our forefathers told? Lord Narayana is everything. How do we find that needle in that haystack? So you don't want to get confused. That is the reason why you go through all these things. It's just like the pilot tried to land into the runway, so he has to come to that vicinity, he has to go into that. So that is how we want to land in. So the way we want to land in, that's a beautiful runway that is put by Ramanuja. And we have to find that runway so that we are trying to avoid the other things to go inside that. So now you take the Vedas. You told Vedas are the best. Vedas are the best of Pramana and it shows Bhagavan exactly as it is. Now I want to know Veda. But unfortunately when you go to the Veda, 95% of the Veda basically talks two things. Only two things. Nine. One it says, what kind of rituals would you do so that you get the benefits? Second one, how do you pray to the Lord? The devotional method. That is what it says. Those are the only two things it says. So, what can I do so that I can gain something? All the mantras what we tell in our rituals, when the child is born, punyavajanam, then annaprasanam, then vidyarambam, then ubanayanam, then uh, uh, vivaham, then sashtapta burti, and simandam. Every mantra is there, it's coming from Veda. All what it does, you have to do this karma. To do this karma, these are the kinds of things. One of them. The other one is something like we do Sandhya Mandana. You pray to the different kinds of demigods. And we tell Purusha Soktam. We tell so many other Soktams are there. They tell about all worshipping different Bhagavan. That's all it tells. So all the time what it does is basically how to do the karma, how do you worship the Bhagavan. But we ask the question, I understand all of them said, but what is the God I'm worshipping? There's so many of them that are here. All of them cannot be the president at the same time. They may be the secretary of state, the secretary of treasury, something like that. But there has to be one guy who is above all. But this Veda does not show me. One place it says you pray to Agni, the other place says you pray to Indran, and other place says you do this one, so you will go to Moksha, you will become Indran. I don't understand, I'm confused. 
Tell me who started all these things. Who started all these kinds of world and provincia. So you get confused. So that is why we divide the Vedas into two portions. One is Karma Gandam, the other one is Jnana Gandam. Karma Gandam, as it says, it tells about karma. What kind of karma you have to do or Ubhasana. How do you pray to Bhagavan? That's all it says. So the easy way of telling that is the Dharma. That's all it does. But it does not tell. It says all of them, you have to pay the tax, you have to go on the April 15th, you have to do this forms. I understand, sir, but who gets all this money? You are interested in where it goes. So I am praying all these things, I am doing the Adhyam, I am doing all this Gayatri Mandram. Who finally takes all of them? I do them. All people are gone. Who takes finally all these things? That is a question we are asking. So the Rishis were going through all of them. So each one wants to justify all of them by their own ways of doing. So, first one to start, this Vedanta, that's what I am trying to say, before that Mimamsa. So we took the Vedas, we divided in two parts. The first part is Karma Gandam, which it is about devotion and basically Karma. How do we pray to Bhagavan and what Karma we should do? The second part is called Upanishad. In the Upanishad, it's a very, very small part. That is the moral of the story. It tells, this is the Lord. This is how you describe Him. That is why the Upanishads are very short part. Veda Siras, we call that one. For a man, Siras is very important. Head. Enjan Udambukki, Sirasai Pradhanam, Tamadeswara. Even though you are eight jans, the body, without the head, that's nothing. So, similarly, the Vedas are so huge, but the Siras for the Veda is basically Upanishad. So, Upanishad are good. So, now you divide it, Veda into two portions, Karma Gandam, Jnana Gandam, Purva Gandam, Uttara Gandam. That is how you call that one. So, now we come to these Rishis who are trying to explain these Vedas. Nyayam, Vaibhashigam, if comes like that one, six, they are not interested all of them. The final two is Mimamsa and Vedanta. Mimamsa is the one, there are 16 chapters are there. 12 of them are written by Jaimini. He is a Sishya of Yas Bhagavan. 4 of them are written by Karadak Prasthar. He wrote 4. These 16 basically explains the first portion of Veda. Dharmam, Karma Gandam, that is what it does. Then the Upanishad portion comes up. Upanishad portion says, who is that person? How portion is done in the first part? Who portion is done in the later part? How do you do the karma? How do you do the devotion? Here, who is that Bhagavan? That is, the who portion when it comes to the Upanishad, that is what is written by Veda Vyasa. So let's take Veda Vyasa. Veda Vyasa, his name is so many Bhadarayana, that's what some people call, or Krishna Dvaibhayana, he called. Krishna means black. Dvaibhayana means he was born in an island between the two rivers. So he was a dark kid born in that. So Iduguri player, that's what they call. Whatever has happened, that's what they will put the name for that one. So that is the name for Krishna Dvaibhayana. He called Veda Vyasa because he took the Vedam, he did the Vyasa. That means classifying them. Vedas were spread out everywhere. Then he took the no, 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 that is not the way. We have to classify. This is called Rig. This is called Yaju. This is called Adarvana. This is called Sama. And these are the Samhidas. These are Aranyam. So he classified all of them very nicely to take that one. So that is what it's called Veda Vyasa. That's the name he was given. So Veda Vyasa, that's the part he did. He was not happy with that. Then I want to do about Mahabharata, Krishna. So he wrote about Mahabharata. Then he was telling, in the Mahabharata, we tell so many different kinds of things. I want to exclusively talk about only Krishna. Because who is not mesmerized by Lord Krishna? So he was mesmerized. So let me tell, one day he was uh, taking a bath in the Yamuna River. Then he got this, this Jnanodev. I want to write about Krishna, Bhagavatam. He wrote that one. Twelve chapters, nine chapters has nothing to do with Krishna. See, we always carry it away. Even in Upanyasam, you always think, people keep on telling so many things at the end, oh, I wanted to say a lot of things, but no time. 
Same thing, Veda Vyasa, we inherited his qualities. So, he had uh, all these kinds of things he told, he uh, forgot about Krishna. Then finally he told about three chapters. Still he was not happy. Then he said, I have to do something to define the Bhagavan. So he took this later portion of the Vedas. Karmagandam, Jnanagandam. Karmagandam tells rituals, Jnanagandam says about Bhagavan. He took that Bhagavan portion, Upanishad, I am going to write what is called Brahma Sutra. Brahma. It's not Chadurmuga Brahma. Okay? Four heads, Brahma is not. Brahma. Brahma means Brahat, I means huge, humongous, magnanimous, so, so what do you call it? A gigantic. That kind of a thing is called Brahma. If Brahma is gigantic in every aspect of that one. So who is that Brahma? I am going to write the formula for that. Sutra means one way of thinking is formula. The other one is you can think of a bundle of thread. So you pull the thread, it keeps on coming. So but it is contained in a small one. So that is called Brahma Sutra. So he wrote the Brahma Sutra. If you take the Brahma Sutra, there are people differently classified. Shankara did that one, Madhvacharya did that one, and Ramanuja did that one. The explanation of Brahma Sutra. So we know Vedas. Vedas, later portion of Vedas is Brahma Gandam, Jnana Gandam, Upanishad. It describes who is that Bhagavan. And for that, Veda Vyasa wrote Brahma Sutra. So Brahma Sutra is come out of his mouth actually. So he wrote the Brahma Sutra. And the Brahma Sutra is very, very cryptic. It is so hard to understand. If I talk to you and say, minus B plus R minus Uta, B squared minus 4AC over 2A, then SA minus S minus B, S minus C, all those formulas if I write, A squared plus B squared equal to C squared. So nobody understands any of them. That is how he has written. Because it is written for mathematicians. So if I talk that one, you will understand, I can understand calculus, so you can do all those kinds of things. Other people cannot understand. So when we wrote that, he says, I don't have no time. I cannot write elaborate things. I want to be very short. So this is what I'm going to write. He did that way. But it was very cryptic. So people started interpreting. Whenever it is so small, you can imagination go so many different ways. Creative ways you explain a lot of them. If you give the whole explanation, it's no problem. Nobody will deny. So that is why Alvar's verses are three lines and four lines. Very short. So you get so many different variations of meanings. So that is how we got the meanings of that one. So in the Brahma Sutra, we take that one. And Ramanuja, Madhvacharya, Shankara did. I had to give a little prelude about all these three so that we will understand. So let's take, before we go that one, the first one we told about uh, Mimamsa. Mimamsa talks about Lord Narayana, but not exclusive. Vedantam, Vedantam is equivalent to Brahma Sutra. Vedantam talks about Narayana exclusively. But what we do, we combine these two. The first one is, uh, first one is called uh, Purva Mimamsa. The other one is called Uttara Mimamsa. We combine them. It is very important because we have to know these two because later on when we study, we study combined together. Purva Mimamsa and Uttara Mimamsa. Purva Mimamsa tells about devotion to the Bhagavan and the rituals. And that essence, Jaivini has written. Adado, Dharma Jikhyasa, that's how it starts. So, it comes all the way up to 16 chapters. Then the last four chapters are written by Brahma Sutra, by Vyasa Bhagavan. These Jaimini and Krada Kastra are his sishyas. So he gave them to write the other things. And he wrote the important part and he wrote that one. So there are 20 chapters. So we are interested in that. Uh, one of 16 are written by uh, Jaimini. Jaimini and... Four are written by the Veda Vyasa and the Krada Kastra. Jaimini wrote 12. Krada yeah. Kastra wrote about 4. So 16 of them are there. And then the last four is written by Veda Vyasa, Brahma Sutra. So... Purva Mimamsa 16 chapters, Uttara Mimamsa 4 chapters. Uttara Mimamsa equals Vedantam, which is equal to Brahma Sutra. So there is no difference between Uttara Mimamsa and Ubanishad. They are one and the same. The meanings of Ubanishad, correct. That's all it is. Oh, okay. The meanings of Jnana Gandam, Ubanishad, oh, the, no, the difference is 
उपनिषद आदि टेक्स्ट बुक ब्रह्मसूत्र में से क्लिफ नोट्स सो इट इज नोट्स ऑफ दैट वन नॉट एक्जैक्टली द सेम बट इट गिव्स यू द एसेंस ऑफ दैट सो नाउ वंस यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस वन लेट्स टेक द थ्री प्रिंसिपल्स व्हाट दे डू बिकॉज़ दे उत्तर में इमाम साहब पूर्व में इमाम साहब 16 चैप्टर्स फोर चैप्टर्स उत्तर में इमाम साहब इज एक्जैक्टली इक्वल टू ब्रह्मसूत्र सो दैट्स हाउ दे कॉल मीमा साहब ऑल ऑफ देम दे कॉल मीमा साहब द रीजन व्हाई even though it does not talk exclusively about narayana we need to study them that is very important that is ramanujas way i am going to tell why in a minute so these 20 chapters are now let's uh, take why before that we take the three different philosophies shankara madhva kamanuja so when you look at the veda i'll give a simple example let's say uh, vidwan Devanagar wearing red shirt can hear. When I say that line, there are so many things are there. When I say he comes here, that means both his soul and the body are coming. I'm not saying soul come here, body stay there. I'm not saying. So when I say come here, he comes both of them. When I say Vidwan, it does not reflect his body. It reflects his soul. When I say wearing a red shirt. soul does not wear the red shirt it is wear by the body so in the same sentence one place you say body one place you say soul one place you say both of them people get confused they look at that and what is this are you talking this or are you talking that so that is why it is very very important and actually i give you if you read andars tirupavai there's only one word you have to remember that tells you everything the essence What is that one more tripavai? Uravil. If you know Uravil, ekta naratla anda Uravu Uravu. She says that one. Uravu means relation. When you say relation means it has to have two things. For the same thing, you cannot have any relation. I am related to me. Nobody says that. When you have two things, immediately you know what is the relation between them. That relation could be so many different manifested forms. And are beautifully written. That one single word that tells you everything. So amazing. Same thing, Deshika. If you take it, one word, Prabhati. There is nothing else that tells you more than that. When you say Prabhati, it suffices. Everything is inside that one. Who you are, what you are doing, who is that, what you are asking. Everything is within that one. Prabhati. Amazing. So when you ask Ramanuja, what you do? Ramanuja's just one single word is context sensitive context sensitive everything has got a context without see then we see all these politicians they say oh they took my words out of context and they are making blowing that one up that's what the politicians say so the context is very important the casual the usual example i give mother is your going baby konjara amma so she is playing with the baby Vishma Pandra, who knows about it? She says the police hear that. Oh, who knows? He says he's killing. So put the mother in jail. It's stupid. What context it was told? So we cannot take out of context. So that is very important. I told you this is like finding the needle in the haystack. Haystack is almost like spaghetti, and we want to find one small piece. So you have to weave through that one correctly to go to that one. There is no straight path for that. Why Ramanuja says in that place it behaves as soul? Why in that place he says this is the body? Why it says like that? In fact, in one place it says he was teaching in Veda and comes the Rishi was teaching this uh, Vedas to the Sudra. What is that? How come it is to the Sudra? He says, No, no, no. It is not the Sudra. He was teaching for another Rishi. But that Rishi was first as a king. When he was a king, he was going after everything. So the low-level person will be going after everything. That's how you made that. So we say, "Dadi na argya na." He may not be, maybe a lean person. Something you get. Iran one tikter na. So you curse with that one. Similarly, in this place, when you say Sudran does not mean. So you have to see the context. 
without the context, it doesn't mean anything. And Ramanuja is amazing in that context. How we know that one? Because when he was listening to Thiruvaimudi, his acharyas were telling. They were telling three verses. When it come to the fourth verse, it was very sad explanation. Ramanuja listened. His face was a little uh, and he was looking at that. Sacharya asked, what's happened? I don't see the sequence of the one. There's no connection. They asked, what? The first three told in a nice way and the fourth one tells in a sad mood. The unveil is The connection is there. So what he says, take the last word, put it in the front and the whole meaning changes. The Acharya told, we knew that. That is how Alavandar has taught us. But I want to see whether you find out by yourself. Because they want to test him. That is how he is going to write Sri Bhashyam later. So the context is sensitive whether he gets that one in his head or not. So that is why he was tested. Alavandar has got five sishyas. All so many sishyas, five of them are important. And if all the five becomes Ramanuja's Acharya. So he was listening to each one of them. So they were testing in so many different ways. Putting in multiple gears. They say that way. That is what he was tested to write the Sri Bhashan. So the context is sensitive. It's very important. So let's take Shankara. So we will do this one. And probably today we will do one or two Brahmas. So Shankara what he did. Is basically in Veda. As I said. Abheda Shrudigal. Bheda Shrudi. Abheda means no Veda. No distinction. All of them same. Veda means different. So when I say Devanadan come here, there is an Atma, there is a body. Similarly, when we look at it, we are somebody, Ishwaran is somebody. We know that we are not God. If you are God, we could have done everything. So we are not really God. So God has to be somebody who has got more power. We think that. So there is something different. But in Veda, when it mixes all of them, in Abheda Shruti, where there is no distinction, Aham, Brahmasmi, Tattvamasi, all those kinds of things, Shankara took those words. And he said, these are Mahavakya. Very important. There are other places where they say distinct. Dva, Subarno, Par. No, no, no. Those are not that important. Amukyam. They are not that important. This is important. Same thing, Madhvacharya came. And he says, no, 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 Abhedam is very important. So when you buy the car, one guy says, no, it's very important, sir. Four cylinder engine, that is very important. Other guy says, no, I don't care what color is that car, that is important. So the other guy might say, what is a stick shift or not, that is important. Even though the car has got all of them, the evaluation criteria goes differently. So, what Madhvacharya told, Bheda Shrutis are important, Abhedam is not important. Sankaracharya told, Abhedha Shrutis are important, Bheda Shrutis are not. Ramanuja come back and he says, listen, a mother has got ten kids. And one kid is very smart. One kid is very rich. One kid is not steady. One kid has got a problem. You cannot say, I like only these four kids. These are not kids. These are not important. How can a mother say like that? Mother is the Veda. Every line is coming out of that. How can you say some of them are not important? Whatever the father's property, it goes equally to everybody. It doesn't go more to somebody who is very educated or rich. Everybody has to get that share. Every single line of Vedas are important as any other line. That is how he started. It's an amazing philosophy. Don't you like that one? That's the true democracy. That is what he started with. In Khadaka Shruti he says, Khadaka Shruti means linking. Khadaka means linking. Enikarva. Linking mechanism. He says, one says zero, the other one says infinity. One says white, one says black. We have to link those two and show it. That is your intelligence. If you don't do that, we don't have that intelligence to know. Don't say Vedas are wrong. We don't know how to connect those two. 
That is why Desiya, every time when you think about Ramanuja, he was mesmerized. Amazing how he can think of all of them. There is no way we can think. A simple example I can tell you. People can see the, when you go for management courses, they teach you negotiation. How do you negotiate? The negotiation starts at the dining table. How does it start? The two kids are fighting. The two kids are saying, I want a bigger piece of the cake. So what we do, we give the knife to the first kid. You cut it. Second kid, you choose the first one. So he has to cut exactly half. If he makes one bigger, the other guy will take it. So that is the negotiation skills. So that is the kind of a thing Imbirmana was thinking. So when you look at some of these things, what they do is amazingly philosophical. We don't have to go a lot of details, but amazingly he has done, which normal people cannot think of. Desiya wrote so many things. He himself, every time he says, Rama is just amazing. There is not even a single line of Srivarsham we could write. So, what he did, in the Kadaga Shri, he tries to take each one, when you talk about a soul or a body or both of them combined, at particular context, each has got the emphasis. That is how you have to do. So that is what he was basically telling. So with this prelude, we go into the Brahma Sutra. In Brahma Sutra, we told there are 16 first chapters are there, Purva Mimamsa, later four chapters, which is basically Brahma Sutra. Before he starts Brahma Sutra, the, the Sri Bhashyam, first thing he wrote two different Mangala Slokam. Agila Bhavana Janmastema Banga Dirile, Vinada Vivida Buddha Urada Rakshagadi Kshe, Sudhisarasi Vidipte, Brahmani Sidi Bhase, Babuddha Mama Paraspin, Semushi Bhakti Rubha. Beautiful. I don't think uh, no one can write uh, such a beautiful, melodious one. But not only that, he has got amazing intricacies. If you are a very good person, see, I was teaching for a long time. My job is basically to talk. So, when you go and stand before the crowd, the first two minutes, you have to impress them. If you impress them, later you say 2 plus 2 is 7, they believe you. That is the impression you need. So, he starts with Agila Bhavana Janmastema Bhagadi Vire. Starts with Agara. That itself is great. Agara Arto Vishnu, we told you that Om Agara Ugaram Agaram. He broke that one, he tells Vishnu, and everybody followed that. He started with that. Agila Bhavana, the whole prevention. Janma, Stema, Bhangadi. Creation, sustenance, destruction. Leela. These are the Leela for so that is what Bhagavan does. Agila, Bhavana, Janmas, Tema, Bangari, Dile. The guy who makes the world to create, sustain and destroys. In fact, that is the essence of Brahma. Definition of Brahma. We are going to see in the second Brahma Sutra. That is how he starts. So he has to establish who is the Brahma. Then, the, in the Sri Bhashyam there are four chapters. Four chapters, each one has got four padams. There are 16 different classified. So let's go to the Brahma Sutra. Brahma Sutra is the one he did. Brahma Sutra has got four adhyayams. Four adhyayams. In the four adhyayams, there are, how many sutras are there, if you ask? 545 sutras, according to Ramanuja. The way how do we classify is some people can combine two of them into one, some of them split them. Shankara did 555. Ramanuja did 545. Madhvacharya did 562. When you look at that number itself, that will tell you Bhedam, Abhedam and Khadagashruti. Shankara said 555. No difference. All of them same. Madhvacharya said 562. All the numbers are different. Ramanuja said 545. 5 and 5 are the same. 5 and 4 are different. Both of them are here. So, those people have written, in the 545 Sutram, he took 150
56 adhikaranams. Adhikaranam means, let me put this way, it's like a theorem. In geometry you studied a theorem. Theorem states something and it's got a proof and certain theorems has got corollaries. So, totally instead of 545, you put 155. These are the important topics you want to know. Adhikaranam. Adhikaranam is the one you establish a point, you defend that one, and you say this is the meaning, these are the doubts you will get, and these are the other people are saying, and they are wrong, this is the final conclusion. For each one you have to do like that. Sutram, Adhanudaya Vishayam, then Samsayam, Purubaksham, Siddhantam. So, that is how you have to do one by one. See, these are very complex words, but it is not very simple. We are not interested, we are not going to argue with anybody. What we need to understand, that's what we are trying to get in. But we have to have some of the basics before we cannot understand any of You want to go to the baseball. You don't want to be a baseball player. But to understand baseball, you have to know something. It takes a while to understand. Once you understand, any which day you can go to the baseball game and watch it. So that understanding part, I'm teaching what is how the baseball game is played. That is what we are doing here. So, the 155 Adhigaranams, the first one is you take the Brahma Sutra, which says, Adado Brahma Jigyasa. It's going to start. Before that, I was telling you two Mangala Sloka. In the first Mangala Sloka, what he says, Agila Bhavana Janma Stema Bhanga Dilire. Next one, Binada Divida Buddha Vrada Rakshaida Dipshe. What he says, the first one is, Jagat Karanatvam, the one who creates, sustains and destroys that person. That is called Brahma. So in the fourth chapter in Sri Bhashyam, what do you do? Very simple. First one is called Samanbaya. Samanbaya Adhyaya. He says, everything goes and falls into Sriman Narayana. Every single word of Veda goes and Anbaya. It's got connection only to him. That is what it says. Samanvaya. Samanvaya Adhyaya. Second one is called and you know, sir, second one is called Abhiroda Adhyaya. Sir, you told me everything is Lord Narayan. I believe that. So, you and me have everything. But why don't you think what I am saying is also? Ah, no, I cannot do that. So, Abhiroda Adhyaya, you accept what I am saying. In the court they say, I tell the truth, the whole truth, Nothing but the truth. So, that's what he says here. In Avirodha Adhyaya, Virodham, Avirodham, Avirodha Adhyaya. He says, in management class, they will have rules. Rule number one, I am the boss. Rule number two, if you have a doubt, go back to the rule number one. That is what it is. <laughs> so, rule number one says, that Narayana is everything. Rule number two, if you have any doubts, if you want to argue, go back to that one. That's what it is. I can prove it to you. So in the second one, what he does, he says, the first one he tries to say, in first uh, Adhyayam, Narayana is the Jagat Karanagan, Achit is not, and there are 26 Tattvams are there. Why is very important? So he tries to establish. Then the other comes, second Adhyayam, Buddha says something, Samanan says something, Advayam says something, Madhvacharya says something, all of them are not credible. So he defeats all of them. Go back to the rule number one. So he very well establishes in the first two, Lord Narayana is everything. Now you are asking third one. Oh, how do I go to the Narayana? That is Sadhana Adhyaya, third one. In Sri Varshyam, he talks completely about Bhakti. How do you go to Bhagavan? It's Bhakti. So I told you, Agila Bhavana Janma Stema Bhanga Adhilide, Vinada Vivida Bhuda Vrata Raksha Gedikshe, Shudhi Shirasi Vidipte Brahmani Srinivasi. He says beautifully, all the Vedanta and all everybody is, finally it goes back to Lord Venkateshwara, Srinivasa. Very beautifully is written. You can think of any other name you could have put, but amazingly brilliant to put, because the whole Sri Bhashyam, he never talks about Sri. Only in Mangala Sogam he says that one. So the Srinivasa not necessarily has to be Tirupati Pirumar, but any Bhagavan, whatever you think, 
who has got the tree in the heart. We're going to say in the first one, Jagat Karan Atuan, there are five different uh, principles we're going to show. The sixth one is Desya says, and that one he shows in the Mudal Slogan itself. Sriyapaditwam. That is what you are showing. Not necessarily Srinivasan. Sriyapaditwam. So Srinivasan, you may think, is only one guy staying in that mountain in Tirupali. No, 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 it is not. It is Sriyapaditwam. He gets everything because of Sri. That is what he wants to show. So, I get a bone of Janma Stema Bangadi Lire, Vinada Vivida Buddha Vra Lakshagi Dikshe, Sudhi Sarasi Vinipte Brahmani Sinivase, Bhavadu Mama Paraspin, Semushi Bhakti Rubha. From that Lord, Siyapari, Sima Narayanan, on his feet, I have to get the Bhakti. That is the plan for you. The first one he says, Narayanan is Karnatho. Second one, he is the Rakshana. Because when you are in danger, he cannot. Even finally what you get? Presidential pardon. That's only one guy can do. Nobody else. So when you say Rakshagam, that is what he said, Rama. What is, what is the Rama Charma slogan when you see that one? Sarva Bhude Bhiyo. She says, Abhayam, so I will give you. That is the reason Rakshagam, you put that one. He is the only one. Nobody else. And the third one he says, Sudhi Sarasi Vidipte Brahmani Srinivasi. I am not telling all of them. Vedas are telling. The Sarasvar Veda is Ubanishad. All those things is telling Srima Narayana, the one who is along with the Sri, he is the final. To reach him, that is the path. And finally, the Bhakti, what I am praying, that is the plan for that. What are you going to get in Moksha? In Moksha, you are not going to get Puriyodra. You are not going to get Mambaram. What you are going to get is what you pray here. It is no different than what you are praying here. But unfortunately, our karmas are stopping to indulge in that bhakti 100%. You are not going to gain anything different. And that would be of everything. That whatever you pray to Bhagavan, you do the things for Bhagavan Kringariyam. That is more than all the things what we see. So that is the first one. And the second one, Paracharya Vasya Sudam Upanishad Duktapti Madhyodhudam Samsaragni Vidipana Vyabhagada Pranatta Sanjeevani Purvacharya Surakshidam Bhagumadi Vyagada Dhurasthitam Anitam Tu Nijaksharai Sumanaso Bhoma Vivandvan Bhagam What he says, all these things, Vyasa Bhagavan, Parasara and everybody, they have written so nicely, I took it from them. Samsara Agni, our Samsara is like an Agni, it's going to make you baspam, ashes. How do you want to get out of that one? They have shown that way. It is not I have derived anything. Desira says, I am like a parrot. They taught me, I repeat that verse. So, in all other places, plagiarism is a problem. In ours, you are great. If you copy Desian, you are the best. They don't want any creativity from you. You may give jokes about America, this place and everything, but the concept is exactly the same. That is what. So, we are all reading the same books, what Desiya wrote, what Ramanja wrote, what all Pubacharya wrote. It should be the same kind of a thing. So then, he starts with this three version. First he says, Bhagavad Bhodhayanam Kridham Vistinam Brahma Sutra Vrittim Purma Charya Sanchi Bhu Tan Madhanu Sarena Sutra Kshani Vyakya Sande He says, this one Brahma Sutram, you did not write for Brahma Sutram. Brahma Sutram, there are explanations are written by so many people. Dangar, Tremidar, Gukadeva, so many people have done. One of them is Bodhaina Rishi. The Bodhaina Rishi took and he wrote called Vriddhi. And he took that Vriddhi, Bhagavad Bodhayana Kridam, Vistirnam, expansion of that, Brahma Sutra Vrittim, Brahma Sutra Vriddhi, he wrote that one. Purvacharya Sankshidhu, according to the alignment of what the Purvacharya have done. Then Madanusarena Sutra Aksharani. Every single syllable 
Every single letter, I am trying to define what it is. Not the whole curve. I am giving you the overall concept. No, no, it's not the overall concept. Every single line. But when you take, yesterday you were asking about the Thiruvayamudi and Upanishad, Thiruvayamudi and Vedam. Whether Namalva took every line of Vedam and converted that, no, no, he did not do that. He gave the essence, the gist of that one into that. In some places, he has converted. Exactly the same line would be there. In some places he did, but overall. Because Vedas are humongous. But this is only Lavan Autu in Thiruvayamudi. How do you capture those things? We cannot. That is why the essence of that one he was telling on that. So, here he says, we took the uh, Brahma Sutra's explanation, which is written by Bodhain Rishi, which is basically Vriddhi. He took the Vriddhi. Everybody knows the, what Ramanuja went to Sarada Vidam. He took the Kura Tarvan and he came back and rewrote all of them. So, that's a different kind of a story, but we will go into Brahma Sutra right now. So, then he starts, Adhado Brahma Jigyasa, Adhado Brahma Jigyasa, that is the first line of Brahma Sutra. So, whether you know everything or not, there are few lines you should know. Nagila Bhavana Janmas Thema Bangadi Lele, what he wrote, wonderful. I don't think nobody can compose like that. And that is one of them. My uh, elders have taught me when you finish the Sandhya Vandanam, you tell that one. Because when we do Sandhya Vandanam, it's equivalent to all the different Vedas you are telling. At the end of the Veda, the essence of Upanishad, the essence of that one is Brahma Sutram, the essence of that one is Sri Bhashi. So, the Sri Bhashi, that is, why we are learning Sri Bhashi? If you ask that one, when Ramanuja was in the last days of his life, when he was in the last days of his life, those Acharyas, they can determine what day they want to go. They have that kind of a power. So, they told, he told his disciples, yes, the time has come. I have come here, I have done my job, I have to leave. So all the Sishyas were so disappointed, sad and very desperate. They said, we are going to kill ourselves. Ramanuja said, no, no, no. How can you kill? You don't have any power. Nothing belongs to you. That's why even right now, Sishya said they put you in jail. Hey, this is my body. No, it's not your body. That is why even here, the rule says, you cannot kill because you don't want anything. But people don't accept. That is what the essence of that. So he says, don't commit suicide. That is not correct. So they ask, what we will do? I will tell you five things you have to do. The first one he says, Sri Bharshate Padite Prabhapital. You have to read the Sri Bharsham and spread that one. That is the most important. That is the reason why we are learning Sri Bharsham. At least in our life, once we have to learn something about that. Not necessarily Kalakshabam, not necessarily Ubanyasam, or maybe lecture, something about that. Because, why we are doing? Let's give you another example. <clears throat> the mother is bringing the kid. How many days the mother does so many things for the baby? Not go next to the knife, not going to the fire, not falling down, changing the pampers, giving the food. The kid doesn't realize any of them. When it becomes 18, it enjoys with all the friends. All the food and Mom, what did you do? Those friends are good. They are very nice. So we are enjoying. Oh, Srinangam temple is so great. Tripuri temple is so great. All oh, this Acharya is very good. This madam is good. I am enjoying all of them. How did you get that madam? If the mother did not protect you, there is no madam. If Ramanuja did not protect, there is no Srinangam. There is no Visistha Advaitam. There is no Ahavala Madam. There is no Paragala Madam. Everybody would have gone. We all would have been Muslims. <laughs> he protected all of them. So we forgot all of them and then we are enjoying all of them. One day at least you think what your mother has done. So that's why we never realize Imbhirma or whatever he has done, beautifully Desi and written. This is like a beautiful necklace. The necklace, there is a pendant. The pendant is Ramanuja. One side is all the Puru Acharya, the other side all the Acharyas came behind. Even though you have all these things, the Sobai, 
The glitter comes only because of the pendant. So without Ramanuja, there's nothing. We would not have Vishishta Advaita. He did not start this one, but he made sure this is re-established. Otherwise, it would have been gone. So that is the reason why we are reading Rama. Ramanuja did not write slokas for us to memorize and do all of them. He has done so many other kinds of things. He has written Gadyam, we tell all of them. He has written Nityam. And he has done so many things, Sri Vashyam, Gira Vashyam, and everything he has done. But at least some of the things we have to know. The most important is the first Mangala Slogam of Sri Vashyam that we should memorize and all the male words in the Punal. At least that's what they have been taught. It's nothing wrong to tell that one. At the end, you have to tell along with the, the three Rasyas. Hatta, Charam, Jayam, and Charam Slogam every day. So you repeat it three times minimum. Okay. So in this one, Adado Brahma Jigyasa. Ramanuja starts writing that way. Ada, Adaha, Brahma, Jigyasa. Ada means then. This again, Ada means therefore. Brahma means Brahma. Jigyasa means exploring. Try to know. I want to get the knowledge about that. Then, therefore, I am exploring the Brahma. That's how it starts. When you say then, something has to have happened before. When you say, therefore, sir, I come to this store because I went there. You went there. You didn't get the item what you want. That's why you come to this store. Obvious. Otherwise, why do you go to the next store? You would have been happy there. So then and therefore means you have gone somewhere that was not fruitful. So Ramanuja took. Why we are start studying like this? There are 20 chapters I told the Purva Mimamsa and Uttara Mimamsa. In the Purva Mimamsa, we studied a lot of things. What do you study? Sir, you say you pay money, they give you a ticket. I got the ticket. I go to the amusement park. The amusement park is Devalokam for us. So you go and have the ride. All this ride. The ride is over. All this roller coaster. Then you keep on sitting. They say, Kriya Get down, man. That's what he says. So you have to get down. He says, no, 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 I want to stay. No, it's all done. Go and get another ticket. So your punyam is expired. Because whenever you start using your karma, tick, 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 the time starts. Stopwatch starts. Every punyam, what you start to use, has got an expiry date. There's nothing stays for permanent. There is no eternal punyam here. So every time when you start using, you, you, have, you have the money in the bank. It is not eternal. As you start with dragging, it goes to zero. One day you go and ask, there's no money, sir, unless you put it in. So you got to go and suffer, earn money, and then put it. Then you can use it. Then we look at this. What is this? Is there anything I eat only once? Lifelong I won't be hungry. I go to work one day, sir. Lifelong it has I had to get the income. Is there anything there? That's nothing. So that is what we are doing in the Purva Mimamsa. They tell Uvasana. I do all of them. I do karma. I accumulate my good merits, punyam. But it expires. You fall down. Keep on doing like this. Then you are asking. I don't understand. Finally, I want who is the authority here? I want to go and question him. How come my ticket is valid for only one ride? What do you do? That is what Vyasa is asking. Who is the authority of this amusement park? I want to ask him. That amusement park said, I am just a manager, I am operator. I cannot do anything. The owner is somewhere else. So you go and ask Indra, you go and ask Shiva, you go and ask Brahma. They are not the owner. The owner is somewhere. These are all the managers, operators. So you want to go to the owner. So who is that owner? That's what we are asking. Adado Brahma Jikyasa. How would I understand him? To know that one. How do we understand? I told you Pramanam Prameyam. Now we understand Prameyam. What we want to understand is that Brahma. Pramanam, who is that one going to show? So who is going, going to show you think? Oh, Vedanta will show. Vedam will show. Upanishad will show. That's what we are telling. Then people are asking. 
and the same. Ad ordo Brahma Jigyasa, that's the Sutra. The meaning of that one is, then therefore I am going to explore the Brahma. Then the Samsaya. Samsaya means doubt. Confusion comes. How do I understand it? You say, well, Vedanta Vakyanga. The sentences what you have in Vedas from that. Ah, sorry, sorry, you cannot understand that. Why? So he says, let me give an example. The opponent is Puru Bhakshi. Puru Bhakshi means somebody has already established. Now we are going to conf uh, confront him and then we are going to establish our principle. The Puru Bhakshi says, let me tell you, there is a baby here. And the baby is watching father. The father says, hey Devanathan, bring the red car here. So Deva brings the red car. Then he says, Santi, take this white car, put it there. So she puts that one. So the baby watches. Oh, this is Devanagan. Oh, this is the car. Go there means that one. White means this. So it, sh it shows some action. Active words are there. That is how it will understand. For example, if you do this Yagam, you will get this Vargam. If you do this one, you will get this much money. If you do this one, you will get a good wife. If you do this one, you will get a good gram. All these kinds of things. It watches all of them active. And on the other hand, the father is talking to somebody and he says, in the next town they had a lot of rain and everybody lived happy. Baby does not understand that. Because it's a statement. So the first one they are arguing, you can understand only if it's an active sentence. Anything which is a statement, you cannot understand. That is why Satyam, Jnanam, Anandam, Brahma, which is a statement, you cannot understand. That does not have any meaning. So Ramanuja says, no, 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 let me tell you. Go one level below that. When the baby was small, what the mother is telling, this is the father, this is the car, this is Nila, moon, this is Anna, this is your elder brother. They tell the baby, Baby understands that. That is how you understand. So, in that one they say, Vyoga, Vidhivakyangal. Vidhivakyangal only has got meaning. They say, no, no, no. Siddha Barama Agarika Kudi. Siddha Barama means a statement. Siddha Barama Agarika Kudi, they also make meaning. That is what you have to establish first. Otherwise, half the sentences in Veda you have to discard them. Our job is to make sure every single line of Veda has to be included first. So we have to contradict him first and we have to prove this is correct. So that is how he did in the first one. So, basis itself is Veda. Basis itself is every line of Veda. So when you go to a shop where the guy is selling tomatoes, what do you say? Hey, what is this? rotten one. So you discard that one, whatever it is, then you cannot buy anything. So you cannot disqualify that. So we want to make sure our product is correct. So that is why in the first one he says, Adado Brahma Jigyasa, the way we are going to understand the Brahma is not only by Vidhi Vakyangal, but also Siddha Brahmana Vakyangal. Not only by the statements, but also, not only by active sentences, but also statements. First thing you have to prove. Then he says, I agree with you. Why don't we go straight to Brahma? We are all Pravati people. We want everything fast. Very quickly. Why we have to go through all these 16 chapters? Let me go directly into Brahma. Let me get into that. Ramanujan says, no, you cannot do that. You have to go through the 16 chapters. Then only these 4 chapters will come. Because these 20 as a package. That's how it comes. Kurgura is That is how it's got bundled. You cannot pick and choose any of those things. You have to have all of them. Adado Dharma Jigyasa to Anavritti Shakta, Anavritti Shakta. All of them is one Sastra. We need to go. Then he asked, why I have to do that? So Sankara said, let me give you. There are four things important to go into exploring Brahma. The first one is Nitya Nitya Vastu Videga, which is permanent, which is temporary. You have to have that knowledge. Second one, Iva Mutra Palaboha Viradaka. All the pressures what you are doing in this world is temporary. They say I beautifully, Visha Madhu. 
Everybody knows that. So you take the pill, which is poison, you put a honey coating on top of that. So Visham Madhu, that's in Ragasetra Saram's law. So Visham Madhu, that's what you are saying. So the samsara is like that. So Yuvamutra Palabhoka Viradaka, you have to have some kind of a dislike on this one. The third one is Samadamadi Sadhana Sambhattakai. Samam and Dhadam. Samam means all your external indriyam. Five karma indriyam, five jnana indriyam, all of them has to be calm. And internal indriyam, eleventh one, bhakti indriyam, which is manas, that has to be calm. All the eleven has to be calm. So if I keep on telling this guy you are going to listen and somebody is throwing his car, you won't be listening, you will be running. So we want our mind has to be calm. That is why especially the Sri Vashyam and Ragasya Prasaram, what they do in, in the morning, after the Abhigamanam, when it is finished, before they collect all the materials at that time, when all these our Acharyas, when they finish their snan, they come and they put all the permanent couple and wear their clothes, at that time they will be telling. And they don't need any books. Trikudani Andavan says, that is how we learn. Tambari Andavan and everybody will be telling. After Tirtha Madhita, Snana Mani, Trinuman Kapu Sadi, they will be keep on telling. Even when you look at the books, you won't understand. That's what he used to say. That is Turkula Jandavan. Then we can think about our, ourselves. <laughs> so, they will be telling these things in the morning. Sri Bhashyam and everything, Agasya our mind has to be very clear before you get into all. They are all human beings. As the day goes by, we always look for where there is a coffee smell there, there is a puri other smell, there is a jalebi. Mind goes there, what happened to this? So before all this starts, we want to get in. That's why Sri Bhashyam, they tell it in the morning. Samadamadi, Sadhana Sambhattaka. And then, last one is Mamukshutva. Mamukshutva means, Mamukshu means the one who is interested in moksha. To go to moksha, that desire is not Nitya Karma. That is not a Nai Nitya Karma. It's a Kamya Karma. Asayina Aladan. You go to moksha because you desire that. That is the only qualification. Nothing else. So this comes from desire. Nobody forced you. They break your hand if you don't do that. Nobody does that. We want that. And fortunately, that is the last commune we, we ask for. We ask for the empty check. And we can write anything we want. So that is what we are basically asking. So these four, what is all these technical words? Forget about technical words. I give a simple one. Nitya Anitya Vastu Viveka means you have to have Jnana. Jnana means which is permanent, which is temporary. As you go through in the life, you understand that. First one is Jnana. Second one, Imamutra Palaboga Viradaha is Vairagya. You come out of all these things, it's not good. I want something else. Samadamadi Sadhana Sambhita called Anushtana. You have to have an Anushtanam to put your body, to sit in a place and do all of them. That comes through the Anushtanam. Fourth one, Mumukshutta, Mochatilasai, that is Bhakti. That is Bhakti, Mutti, Mukti. That's all it is. Bhakti, Mutti, Mukti, Prabhati. That's all. Bhakti, Mutti, Bochina, Mukti, Prabhati. Clear? So that is what it is. Bhakti Mutti Nadaka Pranamaka Prabhati. So what I was telling, Bhakti Mutti means when it is uh, ripened, matured. Mukti means moksha is through Prabhati. So that's playing with the words. <laughs> so that is what it is, uh, Prabhati. So to go to moksha, what do you need? Jnana, Vairagya, Anushtana, Bhakti. That is what Jnana, Vairagya, Anushtana. Immediately our mind goes to Desiya. When you say Jnana, Vairagya, Anushtana. Because why Bhakti cannot stand by itself. We have to have this. If you don't have the Jnana, we see so many people. Like that uh, person who was so mesmerized on his wife's eyes. So beautiful eyes. I don't think I never seen anything like that. He was putting the umbrella for her because I don't want that to go waste. 
So then they said, if I show you something better than that one, would you go? They showed Lord Ranganatha. So bhakti has to be in the right place. We don't want to have bhakti in the wrong places and everything. That is why jnana is important. To get that bhakti, I will have this one someday, I will have that one someday. No, 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 you can't have that one. You have to have a vairagya. Only one thing I want, like the kid, he give any other tie, he throws back. I want only that. That is the one vairagya we need. Then anushtana. Then we say to the kid, if you want that tie, you have to behave yourself. So we want our behavior, which is anushtana. Then only we get the tie what we want. So all these things say, what we are, this is not written by Bhashikar. This is by Yasa Bhagavan. He calls Sadhana Sadushtaya. We don't want all jargons. Make it simple. Jnana, Vairagya, Anushtana, Bhakti. So, Sankara said, these are the qualifications. So, if you have these qualifications, you can come. So, if I go to my neighbor, hey, you want to come for Sivashyam class? You have to have Jnana, Vairagya, Anushtana, all Bhakti, he says, what is he talking? I am not interested in that. It does not have to be that neighbor. It is our kids in the future. They will be telling that one. So what we need to tell them is, you don't put them as a prerequisite. You start telling them these are the things. As they keep on enjoying, they say, this is the Brahma, this is the Jnana, this is Anushtha. Oh, I want to go to that Brahma. I want to know what it is. I want to know. So, this is like a Costco. You put a couple of samples. They buy the box. So, you say, no. You read all these ingredients. If you want to buy, buy it. Nobody will buy that. So, we want to give them sample. That is why we do like this. Make it as simple as that. So, you will do it to your kids. You will do it to your neighbor. You will do it to your all the interested people. So, first thing is Jnana, Vairagya, Anushtana, Bhakti. These four you cannot put as a prerequisite. Why you cannot put a prerequisite? Because nobody will be qualified to come. How do we get that one? First to read the 16 chapters. That's where you go and do, you get the ticket for the amusement park and then even for Bhashyakara, then Ramamuja, was in Kanjiva. He was listening to the Advaita Acharya. Several things of that. Why? He was doing Purva Mimamsa and everything. Yamana Acharya came in the temple along with the Perinambi. So Perinambi was asking, would you go and uh, talk or would you go and bless him? Alanda says, son of, I want him to go and hit the wall. And he left. Why? Because I want him to read the Purva Mimamsa. He hits the wall. Then he realizes. Then he will come to the Jnana Ganda. Don't give him the fish. Teach him how to fish. So he is settled for his life. So that is what he did. He never spoke to him. So Purva Mimamsa is very, very important for us. We don't have to know Purva Mimamsa. We look ourselves in the mirror. We look at our house. We look at our office. We already gone through Purva Mimamsa. <laughs> we don't need any more than that. So we gone through all these things. We understand this is temporary. There are people later on, we see, they may not be. For them to make them to realize, that is why the Purva Mimamsa is there. So, Ibrahimana says, Purva Mimamsa is very important to come to the Uttara Mimamsa. These two put together is called one Shastra. So we wrote something called Lagu Siddhantam. Separately he wrote. That is what I told you all these things. It's called Lagu Siddhantam. Lagu means small, easy, soft, whatever you can think of. That is the Siddhantam he establishes. He establishes the Sadhana Sadhushtayam you learn as we go along about the Brahma. It is not a prerequisite for you. The statements will tell, the statements in Veda will tell about Bhagavan. This is what he was telling the first one. So to establish, to Bhagavan to understand, we are going for all of them. Let me take the second one and uh, start doing it. It's a very interesting when you started doing all of them. Second one is called 
ಜನ್ಮಾದ್ಯ ಜನ್ಮಾದಿ ಪ್ರಭತ್ತಿ you have to have the knowledge only to enhance the path of the rest of your life that's all it is don't start learning all other kinds of things i want to know about buddha manam i want to know shamana madam i want to it will confuse and you will go that way okay stay in that lane anything that enhances to that one so that is why we are not going to do we'll do about five or six is very interesting once you st- once you start this because uh, this uh, preliminary takes a while and then when you start comparing one to one with thiruvayamuri uh, it makes it so beautiful then you understand why ramanuja keep on hitting on the wall he could not find the meaning then you look at thiruvayamuri why so easily it is said over here why the vedas are struggling like this tatva vishi swadegedu tatva vishi swadegedu he goes to satvidya pragaram in the santo yogarishad he goes lines and lines and lines of them namarva wrote in two lines so that is we are all interested like prabhati one small thing we want to give we want to get the maximum benefit that is why we are all interested in through i mari because one line will give you everything two lines will give you everything janma yasya yadaha janmaadi aadi means janma stena bangaadi which is creation sustenance and destruction all the thing yasya whichever it does yeah the ha that is the one whichever who does the creation sustenance and destruction is that is that what i told you this is sutram farma there's no place for all this laborious works what we are starting with brahma sutram so yeah the ha means brahma whichever is doing all this creation sustenance and destruction that is i started fill up the blanks that is brahma now we are asking where does this comes from so there is in taitro upanishad there is a line it says ah edo va imani bhudani jayante yena jhadani jivanti yat prayantya visam visanti tat vijigyasa sve tat brahmedhi the one which creates adavade yet yadoo va imani bhudani jayante from which one everything has come yena 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 jadani jivanti which one makes them to be alive sustained yet prasayanti sam visanti when it dies that it goes and joins that is one think as brahma so upanishad beautifully given the definition of that one so that is one we are taking for the next four brahma sutras this is what taitro upanishad in the purgavalli in the agar anandavalli purgavalli uh, is last one in that one it gives you that so he takes that one in the second one yado va imani bhudani jayanti that says the one which created the world the sustains and destroys that is the brahma then there is a samsam samsam the other people are asking sir i don't understand let me tell you first you are trying to define brahma you told brahma is so huge which cannot be defined now you are telling you going to define brahma if you say brahma is so huge it's undefinable how you going to define 
Now you are talking about important. Visishta Dvaitam. What does it mean? That's what I'm going to tell. When you want to describe a person, let's say that person is wearing a red shirt. Wearing a red shirt is a temporary indicator. Tomorrow you may wear something else. That is called Ubalakshana. The bird that is sitting there is belongs to Devadattan's farm. That is the exact line he used to write in Sri Varshi. Devadatta Nudiya Vayal. He uses that one. So exact line that's so we give a different example. So if the one who was wearing a red shirt means that person you are indicating, the red shirt indicates that person, that red shirt is a temporary phenomenon. That's called Ubalakshana. For that matter, we say that person who does bar it does not have air. It doesn't separate from him. So it's always will be bark. Or the person, let's assume, I don't know, the easiest to make, may not be a good. The person has got no fingers, four fingers only. If there is that, the person has got only four fingers. It's always like that. I think there's no plastic surgery or anything. So, like that one, that's four fingers. The one which cannot be separate, that is called Pisyashima. When I say milk is in that vessel, that vessel could be a square vessel, round vessel, triangle vessel, any vessel. Gold, silver. When I say white milk, the white and milk cannot be separated. That is called Visayashana. You understand that? So, that's Ubalakshanam is there, that's a Visayashanam is there. In Veda, when it defines the Bhagavan, there are a lot of places it says about Ubalakshanam. There are some places it tells about Visayashanam. Visayashanam are the characters that is going to describe, which are inseparable characters, which are going to define Visayashyam. Visayashyam is the milk. Visayashanam is whiteness. You cannot separate those two. Let's say, I sweet milk. Milk is different than sweet. Sweet is a character. Milk is an object. Thing. Same thing. Bhagavan's character is different. Bhagavan itself is different. But you cannot separate those two. So if you have this one, you can identify. If you have a unique Viseshanam, you can identify what is that Viseshyam. Unique characters, you can identify. So you understand where he is taking you? We are trying to define the Brahma. How do you define the Brahma? There are several characters are there which could be satisfied by anybody else. But there are certain characters are there which are unique to him. What are the characters? There are five of them. Shrifti, Stidi, Samharam, Anupravesam, Moksha Pradhan. These five. That is what exactly he defines. These five are unique only to Sriman Narayana. Nobody else. One of them is sufficient. You don't need more than one. Why we are telling five? Because of our desire. We feel so good about Narayana. We tell. We are not saying Srishti, he does that one. Sthiti shares with somebody. No, 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 no. All of them is the only guy. So now you ask me, you cannot define a Brahma. I am telling you, there are certain things which cannot be separated by the Brahma. That will show definitely who is that guy, through which I can identify him. Because he cannot be separated. He cannot take away and put it. If you put a red shirt, you can take away and put some other shirt and run. This Brahma cannot run. I know these qualities. These qualities will never Leave him. That is how I am going to do. That is called Viseshanam and Viseshyam. Viseshanam is the quality. Viseshyam is the object which we are going to do. So, in this one it says, Janmat Yasya Yadaha. Janmadi Yasya Yadaha. Which one creates, which one sustains, which one destroys. Three different things. That is the Brahma. The one you said is absolutely beautiful. Sriya Paritvam. 
Unfortunately, in Sri Bhasham, we don't do that. Deshiga says in Ragasya Prasad. So we say six qualities. In Ragasya Prasad, yes. Jnana, Bala, Aishwarya, Vidya, Sakti, Tejas. Low level qualities. We throw them out. What's the big deal? Jnana, Bala, Aishwarya. I also get when I go to Moksham. Nitya Suris also have that. That is not a unique character. Then you say that one, Satyam, Jnana, Mananda, Mananda, Mamalatvam. What's the big deal? I'm also getting that one when I go to Moksha. What are the unique characters then? Sishti, Sthiti, Samharam, Anupuravesam, Moksha Pradhanam, Shepaditvam. These six in Ragasya Prasad. Here, Shepaditvam is not there. Why? Because we are arguing with the philosophical based everything to define the Brahma. In Vedas, most of the places it says Narayana. Even though we say, wherever it says Narayana, it implicitly states Sri also, Mahalakshmi. That's what Ramanuja wrote. But Veda does not say that one very explicitly. So we have to abide by that. How come this Brahma Sutra, uh, he took that one, he wants to write the meaning of that one in Sri Bhashya. Then he finds it's very hard. So he looked at Trivaimuri. Don't he has to say some gratitude for him? Somebody includes Namayar, the credits for him? No, he didn't do any of them. Not even a single line he took about Namayar. Why? Because we are arguing with all other people, they are all Vaidigas. Vaidiga means they believe in Vedas. When you are talking to him, then you talk about this one. Oh, you are bringing a Sudran here. That is not a Praman. In court the case, I told yesterday, in court the case like O.J. Simpson case, you know that. You don't have to prove O.J. Simpson is not guilty. All it is is prove the police is wrong. That's good enough. He won. So, they don't have to, don't have to prove they are right. They have to prove Ramanuja, you took somebody who is not a Brahmin. So, throw off his case. I won't let that to happen. I will argue. You want to fight with the gun? I'll fight with the gun. You want to fight with the sword? We'll fight with the sword. You want to do boxing? We'll do boxing. I won't take anything else. Same stage. So that is why he did not do that. That is the reason why Shriya Paritum is not there. But we all know, because we gone through Prabhati, the first Prabhati you do is through Thaya, Pushagara Prabhati. So we know that one. So, now in the Janma Yase Yadaha, so there, we are trying to tell the people, the way how we are going to define Brahma, find out something, which he cannot take it and put it away. If you understand that, we go follow him and then we find that is the Brahma. We find it. Then that guy says, Sir, I cannot accept that. Why? What's the problem now? We ask. In the real world we see, there is a guy who is a potter who makes the parts. So he makes the part. There is a guy called tailor. He takes the cloth and he makes the cloth. You don't see one guy makes everything. We don't see that one in the world. In the real world, we don't see like that, sir. Then he says, ah, that's where I got you. There are three ways you can understand. Protection, Anumanam, Shabdam. Protection means all your sensory perceptions. Seeing, drinking, uh, tasting, smelling, hearing, all those things. That will trick you. You drink a nice juice. Beautiful apple juice. Apple and I put only essence. And you see magic shows. I make the Statue of Liberty disappear in front of your eyes. I bend this one. I put this spoon in my nose and bend it. Your eyes are deceiving you. So we cannot believe all those things. You know the story about Arjuna and Krishna. Arjuna and Krishna were walking. At that time, Krishna says, Arjuna, look at that one. That, that bird looks like a parrot. Yeah, yeah, it's a parrot, he says. No, 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 it looks like a dove, Arjuna. He says, yeah, it's dove. No, it, it looks something else, he said. What is this, Arjuna? I keep on telling whatever I say, you say yes. He says, I believe your words more than my eyes. <laughs> That's what Arjuna said. So, whatever the Lord says, whatever the Sabdam that has got more credit than whatever you are seeing with perceptions, perceiving. 
sensory things kind of things. Next one is Anumana. Uh, Anumana means inference, deduction. Uh, based on that one, you come to some conclusion. I mean, classic example I told you, everybody knows that. If A equals to B, B equals to C, then A equals to C. Mother likes the son, son likes the wife. How come the mother in law doesn't like the daughter in law? <laughs> so, all your anomalies, all those things doesn't work. So, the last one is called Shabdam. So, now we are telling, you come and argue with me, saying, for each of Visheshanam, there is a Visheshyam. For each of the character, there is one person. The tailoring art, there is a tailor. The part making art, there is a potter. Now you come back and say, that all the three is done by one guy. This is not in practical world. So, Ramanuja says, I am not talking practical world. He is out of this world. That is why your perception, sensory things will not work. Your deductions will not work. Then he says, what is this? Then how do you I know that? Then he goes to the third Sutama Sutam. Sastrayo Nitvat. The way you will understand the Brahman is through only Sastram. So how beautifully it takes that one. So in the, the third one, he says, Sastrayo Nitvat. Then he says, this is the most important. We'll stop at this one. It will make you to think a lot. In this one, he says, Sastrayo Nitvat. We define the Brahman through Sastra. What is the Sastra? Shruti, Smriti, Inigasha, Purana, Agama, Darsan. In that order, the Supreme Court is Shruti. Unfortunately, you take this Shruti, Yadu Vacha Onivatande, Aprapya Manasasaka, Anandam Brahmano Vidva, Nativedi Kudashanedi. They say, what Vedas? They are completely defeated. They want to go and explain Brahman. They couldn't even do one trillionth of him. And they last the whole thing and come back. And you take that one and put it on your head and say, Oh, Vedas are so great. I'm not degrading Veda. What I'm saying is, if Vedas are like that, you are celebrating so much, think how great the Bhagavan would be. Because we cannot you cannot explain him by any words. There is no way you cannot realize him. He is beyond all these kinds of things, it says. The only way we are going to learn him is only through Sastra. Now this guy is asking. Sir, I understand Sastra and everything you are telling. Pratyaksham, Anumanam, Shabdam. You told that one. But I will ask you, in the real world, we get the jnana. We get the jnana only by practice. How do you know driving? You drive a couple of times, you go this way, you do that way. That is natural. So the Brahma, when he started created world, it would have done all crazy things first. And then started learning more. And then more. That's how you have got all these things. So that someday it would have done crazy kinds of generation, crazy kinds of sustenance. Is it not? He says, no. How is that happen? How the Brahman starts on the first day, how it can be perfect expert like that? Then he tries to explain. Let me give you one example. This is the Santokya Upanishad. Santokya Upanishad. You go and tell it later. This is the most important one in the, our Siddhanta. So I was telling about Visishta Dvaita. I will uh, conclude. Visheshanam, Visheshyam, I told you. So, Bhagavan is the Visheshyam. We, as a Chit and a Chit, are Visheshanam. We are inseparable part to Him. Abhridak Siddhi, Pirikya Muriyada Oravi, inseparable. That is why it is called Visheshta. Siddha Chit, Visheshta Brahmam, that is what it is called. That is why it is called Visheshta Advaidam. Visita Advaita means it is combined with the Brahman as an inseparable part of that one which is uniquely identified. So there is only one thing, Aham Brahmasi, only Brahman is there. There is nothing else. Of course I accept, Ramanuja says. 
Tell me what else is there? We are all Sariram to Brahma and the Brahma is there. There is not anything else. You are right. But when you define that Atma is different, these Atmas are different. So that is why inseparable kind of a thing. Then he was telling, Madhvacharya said, I agree. And uh, Madhvacharya takes very similar things like what we say. But he says, the connection between Chit and Iswaran. Chit means Chaitanya. Chaitanya means Jnana. Jnana means Atma. Okay? Atma is Jnana Swarup. So this Chit and the Bhagavan, the relation between them is like husband and wife. That is what Madhvacharya said. Husband and wife is not inseparable. We have to define that one. Husband and wife, they live like that. You go to the moksha, there also you are different. And depends on what path you come, sir. If you come through the bhakti yogam, you will have more enjoyment in moksha. If you come through prabhati, you took the shortcut, you will have less enjoyment. That is Madhvacharyas. We don't accept that. Because all the Vedas are saying, the Brahman, the Anandam is there, is equal. There is no difference. Your Anandam will be literally equivalent to Bhagavan Samhita. No different. Then, almost like Nityasu, all other muktas are there. Only thing, we will not have the Vibhutu. All the six qualities we told, we will not have. Other than that, we will have everything. Okay. So, in this one, Santokya Upanishad, he was a trite, I was trying to tell the Visita Advaitam, so now you know what is a Visita Advaitam. Visita means inseparable part of that Bhagavan, as we are, as one Brahma, we are there. That is called Visita Advaitam. Specialized case of Advaitam we are talking. Now you are calling Sastra Yonitva. Sastras are the primary Pramanas. If that is the primary Pramana, we are trying to tell how to be defined. You told that Brahma has to learn. On the job training, there is no on the job training for Brahma. How it is possible on the job training is not there. So, this one you are trying to explain from Santokya Upanishad. There is a Uttaraka, there is a Rishi. And he has got a son, Swadegiri. This is the one you will all the time you will be hearing. Visita Advaitam and other differences is Tattvamasi Swadegedu. Tattvamasi Swadegedu. Nine times you will be repeating that one. Nangandu Gunde Narayana Yannum Nam. Nangandu Gunde Narayana Nam. Nine times you will see in Thirmaviyarama. Tattvamasi Swadegedu explanation there. So these people are amazingly brilliant to show. I was telling on that, how this Namalva wrote all of them. Namalva even did not drink mother's milk. No food, no talking, no sleep. Sixteen years like that. And forced on all the Vedas. It is Bhagavan that is an outlet. Namalva's why is like a pipe. Bhagavan pours all of them like that one. They see how beautifully explains this Divya Prabandham and Vedas. Vedas are like ocean, but ocean is salty water. Alvars are like Megham. They take all this water and gives you like a rain water. So that you can drink. Rain water is so small, you can use it. Ocean is so huge, you cannot use that. So Vedas, we are not degrading Vedas. Vedas of course are great, but unfortunately for a common person, it doesn't help. You have to be very knowledgeable. You have to spend a lot of time. That is why Vedas are there. So, Divya Prabandham is not like that. Thirupavai, even smaller than that one, 30 verses, it gives you the every single Vedam is contained in there. Vedam Anitthukum Every word you take it, what Namarva put the Vedam into one line, one verse, and I'll put in a single word of that one. So amazingly written on that one. So that's why we are every time, when we hear about Tirupavi, how many people keep on telling? Every time they keep on giving different meanings of that one. So it generates so much like that. So this uh, Uttaragar has got a son called Swadekid. In those days, they sent him to Guru Gulavasam. He went to Guru Gulavasam for 12 years. He was 12 years, he went. For each Veda, it needs 12 years to study. 
for four Vedas, you need 48 years. 48 years, you know Adhyayana. Uh, as soon as you finish, you go for social security. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. <laughs> so, yeah, 12 years and then 48, 60. years already gone. I don't know what is our lifespan. Can you look at that? So, he learned that one. But this guy is so smart. In one 12 years, he learned all the four Vedas. So, he came back to father. Uttaragar was standing, say yes. Hey, Swadagiri, what happened? He comes here, full day stand and stands. I learned all the Vedas. But looking at his past, your father knows. This guy doesn't know anything. <laughs> because Vidya Gane Sambhana, the more you learn, it is not how much you make, how do you live. It is not how much you know, it's how you behave. These are the two lines my father taught me. It's not how much you know. Vidya Gane Sambhana, how you behave with others. The Nagraja, the great people, they will be such a low level when they talk. That is what we need to do. We should not have mukkurumbu. Mukkurumbu yaratta nam kuratta alvam brahmani. So we should not have egos of all this education, wealth and our kula, caste and everything. We should not have any of them. So when the guy comes and stands there, Swadegedu, Appa knows he doesn't know anything. Swadegedu, I will ask you a question. Okay, ask any part of the Veda I can tell. No, no, no. Like Aravandar and uh, the other guy was arguing. I will ask worldly things. By knowing which one, you would know things which you have not read. By reading what, you will know things you have not read. I give you a chemistry book. By reading chemistry, what chemistry by reading? You would know physics, you would know biology, you would know astronomy. What is this? If I read chemistry, I won't even know chemistry. Forget about astronomy and physics. The one what you learned, you cannot even answer. How are you going to answer that? Ega vijjana, sarva vijjana. You ask that question. By knowing one thing, you know everything. So I think you got scared. He is worried, so you will send him to Guru Bhagavad He says, my teacher does not know that. Even my teacher does not know that. So why don't you teach me? <laughs> so you will send him another 12 years. <laughs> so he was trying to help him. But you are so stupid. It's so easy. I'll tell you. Here is the gold. If you know the gold, you know the manifested product from that gold. Ring, chain, and whatever earrings. All those things you will know. It's the same thing. If you know the clay, you know the parts and different types of things that's manufactured from that. If you know one thing, you know the other. What does it show? Clay is the cause. Karanam. Kodam, Shakti, the kind of parts we make are Karyam. Gold is the Karanam. And all the nagai, the ornaments, what you make is the karya. If you know the karanam, you know the karya. What is the difference between karanam and karya? Vacha rambanam vikaro namadeyam nitigetye rasatyam. Santokya Ganeshwara was telling. Vacha rambanam vikaro nitigetye satyam. He says. Mritti means in this clay. Vacha Arambanam, Vacha, Solar, Arambanam, the Sambandam, the connection, what it is made. The connection made between the pot and the clay is only the same stuff. It is called a different name and different shape. That's all it is. Why it has got? Because it's got a purpose. Clay, I cannot do anything. Part I can carry the water. To do that purpose, I have to have a shape. Namadeyam. I give you a name, I give you a ruba. Vajarammanam vigare. Namadeyam. Mriti getyeva satyam. The mriti, this clay, changed into the part. It's got a name called the part. It's got a shape. So it's got a use. Now you take that part, boom, put it down. 
broken to pieces. What do you see? The same thing. But no name, no shape. But it is the same clay. Don't you see that? If you know the Karanam, you know the Karya. So Bhagavan, in Praya Desa, he takes all the Jivatma and Achetanam, puts it in a Sukshma stage. That is Karanam. He wants to have some purpose. So we saw in Daya Sadagam, Karanakalevare Yogam. He gives you all these things so that you will do some kind of a karyam, you will come to moksha. So he manifests all these kinds of things and makes it into the world. That's how he creates the part. Now he creates a different people. He gives the name, he gives the sarinam, he gives the indriyam. But what is the difference here and what is the difference there? Nothing. It's the same stuff. But it's got a different name and shape. So if you know this, you know everything else. If you know Bhagavan and the Sukshma, they say, that Siddhatit Vizitta, Sukshma, Brahman, is the same as Siddhatit Vizitta, Sula, Brahman. Kudal, we say, Uyirana, Karandengu, Parandula. Single line in Thiruvayamri. That is all the explanation of whole situation. Udal misai uir ana karan dengum parandulan. How in your body there is an atma inside there, that is the way he has spread everywhere. The easiest way to say tat tvam asi. Tat tvam asi. Ni aduaga ayira. You become of that. So, what does it mean? Shankaracharya comes back and says, there is no Jeevatma. Jeevatma is a Maya. Mitya. You think of like that. There is only one Brahma. That is you. Once you clear the magic screen, Maya screen, you understand you are the Brahma. Once you know that, Jeeva Mukti. There is no moksha is a place. Moksha is in your head. So you are the Brahma. Tat Tomasi, you become of that. Once when you know you become of Brahma, that is what is Tat Tomasi. That is how he explained. <laughs> they come back and says, <laughs> that is the explanation for Tat Tomasi. Ni Adwaga Agira, you become of that means there is a Bhagavan inside your heart sitting down over here. Is the same, is spread out everywhere outside also. The micro level thermal inside of this is the macro level everywhere it is spread. Udal misai uirana karandengum parandulan. This one and that one is the same. Or you think of at Sukshma Desai where Bhagavan has put all this uh, jivan and achetanam, nama ruba millamal. There is no name, there is no ruba. Put them in the Sukshma Desai and Stula Desai, he manifests all of them. It is the same thing. That is what he was saying. So now you connect. Udal Misai, Uirana, Karandengum, Parandula. You connect to the Santokya Upanishad. Now I said, I take the Shakti, I take the part, break that. It goes into pieces. Where is the Shakti? It is not there. There is no name, there is no shape. But Shakti is there. If we go to somebody's house and say, Ayyarkara, is the boss inside? No, the boss is not there. If the boss is not there, doesn't mean boss is dead. Boss is not there at that time, at time what you are asking. It doesn't mean boss is non-existent. You are asking Shakti. There is no Shakti in the name of that name, Shakti, or part and that shape. Okay, still there. Ulan Enil, Ulan. Avan Uruvam, Avan Uruvagai. Ulan, Alan Enil, Avan Uruvam, Yuva Uruvagai. Thiruvai Muru. Santhiru Yuvanishad is explained. Ulan Enil, Ulan. If you say he is there, Ulan Enil, Ulan, Avan Uruvam, Yuva Uruvagai. You say he is there in that one? Yes, he is there in all of them. I see Bhagavan in this. I see Bhagavan in this. I see in the Bhagavan. If you say that, yes, he is in all of them. Ulan 
அலன் எனில் இஸ் 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 நாட் தேர் அவன் உரு அவன் அருவம் இவ்வருவுகள் அவனுடைய உருவம் எப்படி இருக்குன்னா இஸ் ஷேப் அருவம் வித்வுட் எனி ஷேப் இஃப் யூ சே இஸ் நாட் தேர் இஸ் தேர் இன் தி நான் எக்ஸிஸ்டன் ஸ்டேட் நான் எக்ஸிஸ்டன் ஸ்டேட் இஸ் தி நேம் அண்ட் ஷேப் வாட் யூ ஆர் திங்கிங் ஆர் இஸ் நாட் ஆஃப் தட் டைப் தி பாஸ் இஸ் நாட் தேர் the place what you are asking the time you are asking is not there does it mean bas is not there at all so what you are asking in sukshma they say where is the prakriti where is the pravanjam where is the shariram where is the indriya this is not there asat vedam says bhagavan is sat sat means irk is there sat na asat kar gaya there's nothing in the maya ada asat So Bhagavan is Asat. Some places it says. How do you explain that? He is Asat. Because he is not in the manifested form. He is Asat. Because he is holding everything inside. How can one be there the same Asat and Asat? That's the way it is. Depends on how you look at it. You say the car is blue. The car has got four say, pistons. Depends on how you look at it. That is what I told you. It's context sensitive. That is how you have to explain that one. In Sri Vaishya when it comes. So that you get. These Vedas are like a haystack. You cannot find a needle. So where do you find that one? You go to Thiruvai. So three things we took. One is. Udal Misai Uyirana Karandangum Parandulani. And the other one is. Udal Nenil Udal Avan Uruvam Yuburubukal. Two things we take. So third one I am going to tell. I didn't tell the third one. No. Third one I did. I did. So now we are asking. I accept all of them. But there is a subtle difference he tries to come back and say. Sir, you told this Brahman comes to this world. It creates all of them. I wear a nice pant. And there is some sagali, some dirt spread on me. So everything is on my pant. I look dirty when I wear this pant. is brahman when it comes over here all this chitta chit chitta na chitta are there the chitta is doing all this vashamam it does all this sins would it not attribute to the bhagavan so is the bhagavan is not ugly that's the question they are asking so how do you answer that one then he says well if you cannot remove the ugliness you will be ugly i give you an example he says the king is there he goes to the prison when he goes to the prison he is staying with the, all the people in the prison but he can easily walk out he has got the power the prisoners cannot walk out that's a difference he is the king he can always get out nothing holds him there is no handcuff is going to hold him there he comes there to help them he comes there to entertain them we are all in prison samsara bhagavan comes there he is like a king the king what he comes he comes for entertainment when he comes for the entertainment what he does he gives an apple so the guy who does not have the legs like us so he go to him then he raises this apple then he raises the apple little higher he tries to jump and he falls down then finally okay take this one he gives that he finds some pleasure in playing with him but he gives that one that is what exactly we do every day we try to keep on jumping more than what we can achieve every day that's what we do and then finally he gives that and says okay take this one because he keep on nagging him give me the potato chips give me the potato chips finally bhagwan gives you that why he does all of them is a play for him sir leela the king cannot do that in andapura he cannot go and do it to his queen that is moksha he cannot play that one with the nitiyas who is anmuktas they are equally powerful like him they have the nyaha so he comes down and plays with us so we are all in prison like that one more thing i tell stop that yeah one more thing what i need to say one more thing this part yeah because i give you a lot of them at the same time it takes a little while we'll come back to all of them but i give all these things for you to start thinking 
so amazing the first to four brahma sutra how ramanuja has explain all these things to get in that puts a correct path to get into the rambe so that is what he does so the third one he says sir i accept all of them you say partner tailor all of them is one person and everything i understand he comes here he is uh, even though his selection is different he comes over here nothing sticks to him he can go back i understand all of them but let me ask you let's say the partner makes something there are three things needed what are the three things a person a clay and the chakra the beam let's take a tailor person cloth and tailoring machine unless you have all the three you cannot do anything understand it if i don't give the tailoring machine you cannot do if you don't give the cloth where you would stitch if you give both the machine and the cloth there has to be a person to do the cloth is called ubadana karma the tailor is called nimitta karma the machine is called sagakari karma material maker and instrument all the three you need then only you do so the tailor says okay give me the cloth let me make it and he makes the suit and give it to you sir this suit i made it i made this suit you will say that but bhagwan says i am the suit when bhagwan makes this prabanjam i make this prabanjam i am the prabanjam can you do that one potter can do that tailor can do where do you get this one it is so confusing come on ramon yes it he goes back to through i mean kadanyalam seyenum yane endrum kadanyalam aadenum yane endrum i made all this kadal ocean nyalam bird everything i made this ocean the world i am the one tadakshada bhavasya prajaye yadi santoki upanishad tadakshada this brahman told itself bhavasya nan pala vidam aagaga kadave let me manifest into so many things and if you really look at that one the big bang theory is that so exactly they try to give scientifically also the brahman says let me become multiple of that tailor never says let me become the suit you understand that one that is how he was trying to defend shastra yonitwat the way you understand the brahman not the common ways of your anumanam not the common ways of protection you have to understand only through shastra that is why we define we go through shastra that is why we define every line of vedas are important so the reason why you go step by step like that vyasa is so beautiful he wrote that formula but ramanuja is beautiful he tries to explain why we have to do one by one like that to come to this kind of the rande otherwise you'll go and crash somewhere else understand everyone so shastra yoni ஆரோக்கியமா <laughs> 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 maker material and instrument so what it is when again we go back undrum devum yarum illa andru when it is there's nobody was there sadeva som yeda makkala asit ekameva advidiyam santokya upanishad again says in those days there was nothing there there's only one was there that is the brahma now we say there's a dot the whole big bang theory starts from a single dot 
from that dark boom expands. When it expands, how fast it expands? It says in one plank. Time. What is a plank? Plank is a subdivision of a second. <coughs> how many planks are there in a second? Is equal to the number of seconds what we have gone through from the Big Bang Theory. From that moment until today, you take how many seconds are there, that many subdivisions are there within a second. Palagra Sadabhagasya in our Veda says, how small is our Atma? Such a minute one. We cannot even think of that. That is why it goes out immediately. Semi-permeable membrane, Mari. It goes out. It does not need any dwaram for itself. It can go out. The way how we come, the way how we come, the way how we go are different. Everybody knows that. The way how we come is through rain, dhanyam, to food, into man, into the woman, and then that's how the child comes. And the way how we go out is through the Surya Gharana and uh, this uh, race of the one to Chandra Mandala go out. It's like everybody. Going one way is different, coming out is other way. Different. <laughs> Two different routes. So, the way we come through is through Dhanyam. The rain and the Dhanyam. And the, the Atma. Comes to the that is how we come. That's how it comes all of them. So, how he creates all of the, the way of uh, answering him. Why? Nimitya Karanam, Sagagari Karanam, Ubadana Karanam. Maker, material, and instrument, all Bhagavan. In that time, there's only one thing was there, Bhagavan. There's nothing else. So everything has to be him. Ved, Budalai, Vittari. Why he gives three things? Ved, Mudal, Vitt. Ved means root. Mudal means first. Vitti means seed. Does it say all the three are the same? Yeah, I'm explaining Santokya Varisha. There you say, Bodhanaganam, Nimitya Karanam, Sagagari Karanam. When there is only one thing there, there's nothing else. So what, how he's going to make with anything? Nobody knows he's the only one there. He makes it out of himself. That is why he says, Tadakshadam, Bhavusyam, Prajayaya. I become many things. So his body itself is manifested into everything. So Ubadana Karanam is himself. Does he need anything? Let he need a tailoring machine. Does he need anything? No. What he needs? Sangalpa. Tadekshadam, Aikshadam means Sangalpa. He thought of that. The thinking is good enough. And you will see that one, how the thinking also comes into the Big Bang Theory. So, later on we are finding, we are far below than what Vedas can explain, sense are. But still we can find something to relate to that one. So, they are asking the question, maker, material, and instrument. All of them are Bhagavan. How? He is the maker, there is nobody else there. Tadekshadam. I thought of doing that one, Sangalpam. So, the thinking, Bhagavan's Sangalpam, is the Sagakari. He is thinking. And he manifests himself. Bhagusyam. Let me be in multiple things. He manifested into that. So, that is, he becomes Ubhadanakana, he is the material. So, maker, material, instrument, all of them. Re, Mudalai, Vittai, same thing comes in through Ayurveda. So you can see one-to-one -one correspondence to Santo Kyubanishad and through Ayurveda. Maybe let me stop. Too many things at this point. So we'll stop. Because I don't want to stop at that one. It took more time than what it is. But uh, I thought it's a package. You got all of them. Then you can think. Next class we go through some of these things and further on that. Kavidan ki gasim maya kalyan munasarini srimade venkadesa yavedan prabhurave namaha. Tadak. Tadak. Tadak.